हरि ओम इन बृहदारण्य को उपनिषद दी फोर्थ चैप्टर फिफ्थ सेगमेंट सिक्स मंत्र फोर फाइव सिक्स आत्मनस्तु का माया सर्व प्रियम भवती सो इन दी लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ दैट सेगमेंट टू मैत्रेयी द मैसेज दैट इज गिवन इज लाउड एंड क्लियर वॉट इज द मैसेज आत्मा व अरे द्रष्टव्य श्रोतव्य मंतव्य निधिध्यासीतव्य मैत्रेयी आत्मनि खलु अरे द्रष्टे श्रुते मते विज्ञाते इदम सर्वम विदितम ऑल दिस इज नोन एज वन ओन सब्सट्रैटम सो दि श्रवण मनन निधिध्यासन एज अ प्रिस्क्राइब्ड मेथड बाय आवर ओन स्क्रिप्चर्स the shravana is what gives us gnana shravana of what shravana of this abheda drishti gnana which is given through a competent brahmanishtha atma vidyavan guru <coughs> and at that point also is very clear that the, this gnana alone kaivalya gnanat eva tu kaivalyam but for this gnana to take us to our own true nature to that to be revealed sadhana chatushtaya has to be very very firm viveka vairagya shamadamadi shat sampa it is a must there is no uh, bargaining that you know if i cut this and directly come you will not have the experience you would have learnt maybe academically but the experience would not be there the profoundness of the subjective experience will be nil of these i think the most important is to have a very strong vairagya a very strong vairagya wherein there is absolutely no traces of the shadurmi what are the shadurmi kshut pipasa shoka moha and jara mrityu the impact of it and putreshana viteshana lokeshana we have grown out of vairagya should be very very solid in a seeker's mind that not even a thought passes by that this is something that i am missing i should be indulging or enjoying or possessing there is no fomo fear of missing out and the individual has personal experience that they have chewed that world and seen how insipid tasteless it is therefore there is no distraction from that world anymore that vairagya is crucial otherwise on one side we'll keep studying the other side we'll keep running through the samsara and expect that suddenly as a magic wand or a magic magic touch there are many who ask swami ji put your hand on our head it will be that spiritual awakening i only laugh because i was also not that far away from that expectation way back but that doesn't work that has to sink in that it is a very sincere effort from the seeker to have this vairagya and nididhyasana that which we are learning is not to remove doubts 
it is for a person who is who has enough clarity and the conviction born thereof how does one get this clarity so the second step is manana shrotavyaha mantavyaha so manana is very important what happens with manana samshaya nivritti happens all doubts questions confusions are removed and the buddhi has the clarity thereby there is this unshakable conviction so we are not doing nididhyasana for conviction nididhyasana is purely a process a method wherein we are trying to revisit reeducate those points of clarity which i have come to uh, understand with my clarity of buddhi and i am revisiting them again and again to remove like when you go to a pond to take a picture of water there is this moss that is like you know the green leafy thing that is there so you just push it a little it will go away and you take the water the moment you turn it will come back again that's how strong are our vasana tendencies so to remove that is what we are revisiting so that that vasana becomes weakened and weakened there are certain vasanas which have to be nipped at bud there are certain vasanas that have to be expressed there are certain vasanas which have to be evaluated and in that light of clarity it gets burnt down and that is what we are doing in nididhyasana but if on the seat of or coming to the segment of nididhyasana if there is somebody who still has several doubts and in nididhyasana suddenly we become stuck the questions can be multivaried why why do i have to study scriptures so you have to go back to the first shloka sarva vedanta siddhanta or even better in from the tatva bodha these are prakarana granthas we are not even talking about the pramana granthas like uh, advaita siddhi or chitsukhi or the brahma sutras nothing of that just this this clarity if we have to gain we have to go through the initial preparatory text called prakarana granthas one of the best to start with is tatva bodha atma bodha which bhagwan adi shankar acharya ji has penned down for us we just have to study it and become more and more clearer in our understanding otherwise even after coming to nididhyasana there will be that lingering questions you know why this logic only by this logic that the shruti is providing or how can you be so detached and unconcerned with the jagat and its problems you know we should do seva there is nothing wrong in doing seva but that is not what is being discussed here yes seva and that field of karma is definitely a necessity but the stage for it is somewhere else and here we are not discussing that those kinds of confusions and uh, you know why is god not doing anything we are stuck in this samsara what kind of god is he that he has created this samsara and you know what is wrong with this vedanta it says that this jagat is unreal this or you know even worse is vedanta is very confusing on one side they say that you know this world is unreal then they say no 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 actually this world is bhagwan swarupa vishwam jagat is bhagwan swarupa why can't they stay in one line one one logic see when you when you are driving a car you cannot hold the steering in one particular angle alone and say that this is the best no according to the road according to the traffic i have to maneuver sometimes i have to go left sometimes i have to go right sometimes i have to maintain steadiness most of the time steadiness is required 
but then when required i have to be able to change the lanes change the direction there's a lot i cannot say that it has to be fixed and that is what we are expecting from vedanta so all these kinds of confusions should be dealt in the in the second step of manana in the nididhyasana the individual has now the conviction the born out of that clarity and um, that person is ready because that that conviction has brought in the inspiration to weaken all these tendencies and vasanas that are still lingering because of which i go back to this habitual error to remove that is what we are focusing upon so in this 257th shloka bhagwan adi shankaracharya ji says भ्रांति कल्पित जगत कलाश्रयम स्वाश्रयम च सद सद विलक्षण निष्कल निरुपमान वधीयत ब्रह्मतत्वसी भावयात्म so the jagat that i am experiencing what have we studied that it is nothing but jagat kala kala it is just a insignificant small part finite part that projection is just a finite part but what is brahman that which is the ashraya of this jagat that which i am projecting myself now why am i projecting it it is because of bhranti bhranti ignorance ignorance of what ignorance of my own true nature so to understand it if i put it this way it would be easier to grasp i suppose agnana solidified is the experience of this jagat gnana solidified is understanding brahman as the substratum which is my true nature subjectively that is me that is gnana solidified but then you know one has to understand that a projection cannot Ex exist if there is no adhara adhishthana for that projection to be projected upon you cannot project a snake on a rope if there is no rope then i mean okay let's hold on there if you are projecting a snake and there is no rope then it is no more a delusion it is hallucination it's no more bhranti it is vibhranti it is uh, it is hallucination and there is a separate institution for it vedanta will not help there otherwise even those who are hallucinating if we bring them to vedanta vichara then there will be only confusion there will be a lot of you know splits within and it will lead to a lot of turmoil inside so here what are we saying for this jagat to be experienced there has to be adhishthana that adhishthana that ashraya is me that brahma tatva and this brahma tatva essentially is something which does not require any ashraya ashraya support or any edifice or something that can qualify it so it is not something born out of an indulgence from the organs of perception and the world of uh, things that we experience it is not born out of that it is of course not a feeling 
you know i feel something and many people are lost in that field of and many times when you do explain that it is not this feeling and they insist upon it all that you can say sukhi baba <laughs> chiranjeevi baba sukhi baba you can only pray for them and the worst is we have this innate quality to because that is how we have functioned for several lives millions of lives that everything is validated when my intellect has a grasp that is when i feel the grip and i do a lot of things to find that grip manipulate manage maneuver the whole field of samsara starts there but here it is not a concept it is that which illumines that concept that is what the buddhi has to come to accept acknowledge and own up that this brahma tatva does not require any other ashraya it does not require something to validate it is swata siddha it is by itself okay we also saw that it is the nature of existence what kind of existence are there different kinds of existences no get me don't get me wrong when i say what existence that which we see is what we call as existence that which is gross is what we call as existence that which is not seen not gross but i know it is because it is in the subtler world and that is where many people have this uh huge barrier to accept huge barrier to accept that uh, yes this world is fine uh, in memory of my father mother or the departed ones i i think i can at the most bring myself to go to a orphanage or a senior citizen home feed them and feel good shraddha uh, because i i i don't see it so it is non existent no that which i do not see that subtle world is called asat oh but you constantly sat means existence asat means non existent no sat has another meaning sat means that which is perceived asat means that which cannot be perceived so the entire subtle world is into that realm of unperceivable and what is this existence this nature of existence is that which can which is the substratum which is the adhisthana for both these gross perceivable and the subtle unperceivable that which is manifest and unmanifest this is the substratum for sada sad vilakshanam therefore it is something other than sat or asat that which can be seen that which cannot be un- that which cannot be seen sada sad vilakshanam nishkalam nirupa nirupamana vat hi yat nishkalam nirupamana first let's see nishkalam kala means divisions that's why we keep saying akhanda there is no kala there is no fragmentation there are no that's why we say chandra has shodasha kala 16 parts and once in 15 days has the fullness to it and otherwise there go 16 parts so kala kala is a part a division or you can also call it as avyava avyava limbs nishkala therefore we cannot in all trueness accept the saguna sakara bhagavan with form 
as the ultimate reality. Yes, that Bhagwan, that Ishvara, is a via media for the mind to transcend itself. What about all those bhaktas who have experienced it? Yes, that experience is true. We don't say that that Bhagwan is not there or non-existent. It is just that that is not the ultimate step. Why? If there is avayava, if there are limbs, then there can be, you know, the possibility of self-destruction. And this is something which cannot be. This Atma Chaitanya is something which cannot be destroyed by anything. And therefore, there cannot be anything other than it to destroy. Self-destruct. Yeah, we have those self-destructing things. Uh, there was this father who used to lovingly bring a lot of toys for his child. And the child was a genius. He would rip it apart in no time. One day that father frustrated goes to a shop and asks for unbreakable. So father comes the next day. So he has gifted it to his son. The next day he goes to office, comes back and he sees that the child is amazingly playing with that toy and it is still there. He is proud of his purchase. He says, how was it kid? The kid says, it's so cool, dad. With this, I broke everything else. So if there is a limb, if there is a part, if there is an avyava, there can be self-destruction. Niravyava or nishkala, meaning there is no possibility of that either. If you remember, we had studied this in the Sajatiya, Vijatiya, Swagata, Bheda, Rahitya. Avyava, Rahitya. So, Swagata also, there is no Bheda possible. Nishkala. Nirupamana. Nirupama. Nirupama means Upama simile. Something that it can be compared to. <coughs> Something that it can be compared to. Nirupama, that which it cannot be compared with. Why can it not be compared? It cannot be compared because it is one without a second. You can compare only when there is something other than it. There is nothing possible other than existence to be. Therefore, it is Nirupama. And such a Nirupama, incomparable, Advaya Tattva is my true nature. Brahma Tattva Masi Bhavayatmani. And this bhavana has to be done incessantly, continuously, regularly, rain or shine. Without falling to the traps of doubts, confusions or indulgences being dragged out into the world of worldliness. So that alertness, vigilance is required to practice this. That I am that Brahma Tattva. We will continue this Atma Chintana in the next shloka as well. Hari Om.